Well folks, we're heading to the hills again. We're gonna have a little wander, get some inspiration, and I wanna talk about one specific thing, and that is this. Do I use photographs in my paintings? It feels a little bit like a trick question, and it's one I'm always getting asked. And I don't know why I feel so guilty about it, because the answer is yes, it's an invaluable tool. Let's hit the hills, have a wander, and talk about why the camera is such a useful bit of kit for an oil painter. Let's go. So a major reason is colour. At the moment, I want to capture really loyally the colour of the landscape. I want to abstract some of the forms, but I want to reflect really loyally the colours in the landscape. So a camera is magical for that, because in the snap of a shutter, I can capture that information time and time again on an outing. Whereas if I paint outdoors, I have to be really selective and paint just one view to capture that really complex colour information. And that leads me nicely on to that, that second idea of complication, complexity. That if I try and paint from memory or I sort of make it up, for want of a better word, I'm always astonished by how poorly I can capture the complexity of even what looks like quite bland landscape elements. And it ends up looking a bit cartoony. When you study textures in the landscape be it you know heather grass hillside sky cloud wall the textures are really complicated and and subtle and so the camera helps me with that subtlety it's also got a really random quality um that that you know our minds are orderly we want to put things in nice patterns and that that naturalism often comes from the slightly surprising quality of how things are arrayed in the landscape. Artists used to carry round like a cardboard cutout of a rectangle to help them frame the picture. And can you blame them? Because composition is not easy. The way I think about it is like we're in this bloody great snow dome. So you've got 360 degree views all round, 180 over the top. How the hell do you choose which square to paint? So a camera is really helpful. It gives us some way of trying out different pictures till we can find something we like. Yeah, the last reason is a really simple one, and, and that's basically that I'm not that good. I think that the demand of coming to a place and either being able to render quickly by hand in a sketchbook or um, paint in situ, I think that's like the pinnacle of, of technical skill to be able to take a kind of mental snapshot um, and if I've got if I've got three weeks of painting ahead in the grey and I, and I want to be inspired and paint things I'm interested in um, I've got to be pragmatic and I take my hat off to the you know the old landscape greats of, of yore because they must have had the most highly developed capabilities for, for capturing an image in their minds on the one hand and on the other spent an enormous amount of time outside working um, which is not without its challenges
I suspect as time goes on, if I can stick at this for years, I'll get better at it. But right now, the camera is a close companion. I'm just getting down to Three Shires Head and it's perfect, it's like I've planned it because the sun is between a gap in the hills and the light is on the water which is exactly what I wanted so hopefully I'm going to get a real feast of photographs here to take home and use. I don't know if you can see that but that is that's exactly what I'm going for. It's the sort of vagaries of light and water and stone. And you know, how the hell do you capture that in a sketchbook? I, d I don't know. Cheers. Taste of soup again. It's quarter to 12 um, and it's extraordinary. It feels like the sun has reached its zenith and is now going down. So the, the quality of the light has changed and, and yeah, it feels like we're definitely slipping into the, the winter afternoon. And who knows how long it will be until we have a lovely day like this again. So thank you as ever for your companionship on this little trudge around the high and winding footpaths of Derbyshire. Um, it's a it's a really cracking walk this um, with a very special focal point in the, the waterfalls it's near the road um, with good parking so I will put a little map on my website of the route I've done today and would heartily encourage you to uh, take uh, take a little stroll up here when the weather is as fine as it is today D don't bother coming if it's raining it's 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 hideous um but uh yes adios thanks very much Just coming down across that bit of ground there <clears throat> and the footpath completely disappeared. There's no signs. It's a really rough farm. And I'm halfway down and there's a bloke in the house on the hill starts beeping his horn at me. And you just hey honestly. And you know, that is why I think we need right to roam in this country. This land is your land, this land is my land. From the Peak District to the smallest island. Ooh, now we're talking more bubbly water. Bubblicious.